Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Bill Chase and the Movies and I'm back with my original format this week recapping some of the films that have come out this January. Now usually January is a dead month for films and to say this month's been eventful is something to say this month has been great, well uh, that would be kind of overstating it. Anyway, the first one we're reviewing this week is called Youth in Revolt, a very interesting uh, vehicle starring Michael Cera, who many are starting to complain has the same shtick, but hey, he's damn good at it. So I say until he gets annoying or his movie starts sucking, then I'll stick with him through it. Now, uh, this, now this film, he plays a character named Nick Twisk. Now, already that name makes him think his character sounds pathetic. But, but really, he's he's... Pathetic in the eyes of who, really? I mean, I guess pathetic in the eyes of society? Well, that's what this movie pretty much portrays. And he's eyeballing the beautiful Sheenie Saunders, played by newcomer Portia Doubleday. I'm talking about, talking about a couple names right there. Nick doesn't have the greatest of surroundings, to say the least. His mom, played by the always reliable Gene Smart, is shot at with Jerry, a drunk, pathetic, fat loser, played by Zach Galifianakis, best known as the one-man wolf pack in The Hangover. And he is proving, without a shadow of a doubt, that he is part of the future new wave of comedy. Now, also, there's his dad, played by the always reliable and always too hard to screw up a role, Steve Buscemi, who's shot up with a girl played, played by Ari Gaynor, pretty much gleefully robbing the cradle. Now, it's not that the fact that his parents are with other people that messes him up, it's the fact the way that the way his parents handle the whole situation. His parents are messed up, therefore making him feel like a messed up loser. He is desperate to reunite with Sheeny, who he met on a family vacation a while back, and he feels that he, he's not good enough to, I guess you could say, pursue her. Now, he also creates an alter ego by the name, a mentally developed alter ego, uh, Francois Dillinger. Now, <laughs> and the movie takes off right into the stratosphere, creating scenes of just utter hilarity and sophistication. I love how Sarah's performance cleverly div divides itself within the characters he plays, with his own so-called losery self trying to emulate Francois and, of course, the character of Francois himself. Now. I, um, I, the other thing I like too is uh, is that I enjoy the fact that you know we, we, we get right into his character's objective where you know the guy knows what he wants, he knows what he needs, but needs a GPS to get it, pretty much. I mean, he's just so directionless in his life. Now, Double Day is really good here as Sheenie. She is very effective as the object of one or two desires, maybe. Uh, the movie is far from perfect, but overall the comedic genre has improved so much drastically over the past four or five years, though, a movie like this really just just could be good on its own, but uh, Youth and Revolt isn't just some dumb, raunchy sex comedy, which the concept of this, it very well could have been. That said, however, it, it tries very hard to overcome all these cliches, it does a very good job, all the actors are very good, I give Youth and Revolt three and a half stars out of five.